Good morning, Oroville. Good morning, the big wild world. This is Krishna McKenzie bringing you your road back to nature. And this morning I am with Rekha. Hello. Hi, Rekha. Hi. Nice to have you here this morning. And Rekha is a friend, a fellow Orovillian, and she is one of the people who has really been behind trying to bring a community garden into her community. So tell us about your community garden and the trials and tribulations of that <laughs> adventure and how long has it been? Go- when did you start? Well, um, I think when the community had uh, planned their landscaping um, space and we were wondering, you know, what we want to do with it. I think this seed was in my head at that time. This is almost about more than two years back is okay. when the idea kind of uh, was kind of stuck in my head because uh, we had a lot of space. So um, I guess that's when, you know, the to and fro be- with you, the messages of shall we do something started. Because it's a very new community. Yes. You know, have, the buildings are just put up and it's not exactly. like there were a lot of established trees and parks and that sort of true. limitations to true. gardens that are in other communities. True, true. Right. And it was a large expanse of uh, space. Mm. So it, it just kept, you know, going in my head that we should do something about it. And that's when, uh, you know, I approached you. And luckily, with all the lockdown and all that, we had a lot of time in hand. And that's when I think it uh, something started happening. Yeah. We started with a small, tiny little space. And time, energy and focus. No? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So we started with with one Circle Garden? Yes, it's about a thousand square feet. I figured that out with a local farmer, how much we've kind of come up with. So it's about a thousand square feet is what we started with. Yeah. That's beautiful. And you and Stefano, who is uh, running this... um, Oroville Radio, yes. he he was one of the major Absolutely. diggers of yeah. the trenches and the gar- creators of the garden Absolutely. with you and Marion. Yeah, Stefano was our muscle behind the whole uh, you know, project and right. Marion brought her feminine energy, the, the motherly care yes. and you know, yes. like uh, she's been the one who... Uh, and the mulching. Absolutely. The, nice. And also the kids, you know, uh, thanks to this, all these kids were at home and you know, like it was lovely to they have them break... Yes, Raking yes. up leaves and stuff. Absolutely. We had real good fun, you know, bringing them all together. And, and for them to see, you know, how a bare piece of land kind of... Uh, can transform. Yeah, can transform. I mean, it's not only them. There's many people, they say, oh, I've seen what's happened in Serenity. It's amazing. I mean, yeah. the bananas are like, uh, I think they must be five, six feet high now. Yes, it's taller than me. <laughs> yeah, and the tapioca is taller. The, yeah. the fruit trees are growing. We have what fruit trees there are? There are Ramphal... Ramphal, we have sita fal, we have uh, soursop. Soursop, as a lemon, lemon, no? that yes. big lemon. Yes. And uh, just outside the garden, you also have jack and chiku, I think, have yes, been jack, planted. Yes, jack and chiku, and we also have a pitanga. A pitanga has cherry. been planted, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. And around, the, so the, the basic uh, garden unit that we used in, in Serenity was the circle garden. So yes. it's a two and a half meter Radia, uh, a diameter yeah. with a trench and the trench is nothing more than a vessel in which we return organic matter so we collected all sorts of sticks and leaves and weeds and grass and yes. we filled up the trenches absolutely and i think in serenity what we did and, and it became a bit more standard for me when i was doing gardens in other places was that we did a trench uh, as a cross through the garden creating yes. four quadrants yes which became a bit um I mean, I think the more trenches you have, the more organic matter you have the, on the level of sustainability of the soil, the, the better that is, uh, is going to be over, over time. True. And also the accessibility, you know, we can walk. Accessibility, yeah, yeah. yes. Like I realized that because it's it's been about close to three months since we started this uh, project. Mm. And we, ha- you know, the whole circle gardens were filled with such lovely edible weeds. But we had to kind of o- obviously return it back to the soil. And it was so easy for me to, you know, get into the uh, trenches and, you know, pluck them out. Yes. If not for those crosses, I think it would have been yes. quite tough to yeah. reach out. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So... In the gardens, we have growing around the central fruit tree, which is our long-duration plant. We have our medium-duration plants, papaya, banana, 
There's drumstick. some pineapple drumstick. There's some turmeric. Yes. Um, and now we have uh, cluster beans, which have kind of. So those uh, are the more shorter durations. Yes. So we have cluster bean, as yes. you say, lady's finger. Yes. Have they've, they've germinated? Uh, lady, lady's finger hasn't germinated yet. yet. We've just, uh, just you know, planted yeah, it and last eggplants Wednesday. are waiting to be put. In, eggplants into, waiting yeah, to yeah. go in. This cucumber has gone in. Yes. But the bottle gourd is rampant. Uh, yes. And that's, the ash gourd. Yeah, that's around the natural fence that we and Amir and all of us created. So which yeah, is, yeah, which is a beautiful, a beautiful part of this particular garden is the collection of all sorts of sticks just piled together in a one meter high, um, you know, sort of a hedge. And that's to stop the cows coming in because there is a cow issue at yes, times. Yes. And uh, But then this hedge has then become a structure yeah. on which the gourds are very elegantly Climbing yeah. and creeping over, along with blue flowers, which will slowly emerge. The, yes. ra- the Sangapu, the Shankapushpa, Clitoria ternitia, yeah. and the pumpkins. Now we've just planted, I think last week we planted long beans and wing beans yes, on the hedge. Too, yeah. So yeah. those will also pop up, pop up very soon. Yeah. And this hedge is a typical permaculture. Yeah. You get more than one result from one action. So True. it's a hedge to stop the cows. Yeah. It's also decomposing into the soil. Yes. So plants will feed from underneath it. Yeah. And also it's a structure on which people on which plants can grow. So that's that's yeah. the beauty of permaculture. And um and then a lot of edible weeds. Yes, a lot, lot of, of edible spinaches. weeds. Yeah, and we've created a small little spinach uh, triangle, you know, which was Stefano's idea of having a triangle. So Marion is the one who's taking care of watering that with a little bit and of fresh water. And there you have yeah. Brazil spinach, New Zealand spinach, yes. chicken spinach, yeah. satenakire, yeah. devil's horse whip. Yes, that that's by that's, that's a gift by nature. And uh, I think there's <laughs> sweet potato, portalaca, yeah. there's... I think there's about 10 different spinaches in, more in than all that, that, I would say. Yeah, yeah more, more even. than that. Yeah, and yeah. rosella. Rosella. And um, there's lemongrass yeah. in yeah. there. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's very nice. And some what? herbs like karpuravalli and basil. Karpuravalli, yeah. basil, exactly. Yeah. And uh, curry leaf is in the, you know, yeah. Curry so all leaf. These, yeah. And you have air potato. Yes. As well, growing. Yeah, that's in the, the central beauty. The diascora in the yeah. middle, yeah. yeah. I think that. Um, you know, it's good to talk about the the challenges that that have been faced. So one of the challenges was this whole issue of grey water. There's a big sort of uh, I would say there's a there's a lack of understanding and knowledge of what grey water is. Yeah. No, so yeah. grey water is basically kitchen waste, bathroom waste. No? Yes, yes. It's not the toilet fr- waste. That's black water. No, ah, so yeah. the grey water is the kitchen and the bathroom waste, yeah. and they say it's not good to use if it's stored. Yes, if it's not in on a continuous loop of usage. Right. So the recent study that we did on the water uh, came across and, and when we checked it for the irrigation standards, when mm. you check it for irrigation standards, apparently it's it's, it's perfect. Okay, you know? yeah. wonderful. Yeah, yeah, the NPK is quite high and nice which is good for the soil mm. and the you know E. coli is within the limits that it right. needs to be right. so for irrigation purpose it's supposed to be really good and no wonder the plants are thriving and know? I was told though that if we could use a drip irrigation system mm-hmm. where it just drips into the soil it's even safer because the E. coli is not something that integrates into the tissues of the plants oh, okay. it's something that sits on the leaf from contact with the water yeah so as long as the drip goes directly into the soil, we actually avoid that whole E. coli story yeah, completely, yeah. which is a wonderful thing. And uh, you make your own soap, right? You make yes. your own bioenzyme, shampoo. Yes. Everything. A bio en- a citrus bioenzyme is basically, um, you know, it's, it's an all-purpose cleanser. Mm. So it doesn't matter whether you're using it on yourself, on your surroundings, on your pets. For your right. car, for your bikes, it really doesn't matter. So it's just an all-purpose, uh, you know, cleanser, mm. and it becomes really versatile. You add a little soap nuts into it, or mm. shikakai into mm. it. You know, if you if you're into smooth hair, then you add a little bit of uh, hibiscus into it. Right. So it's it's really versatile, and and for me. Well, the whole fact that you can lead your life with just 
you know, with what the plants and the trees give you back, In itself is a, absolutely, you know, the, simple the, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether it's a tooth powder or a bath powder or a shampoo made out of uh, bioenzyme or cleaning liquids made out of bioenzyme, every single thing that you're using in your day-to-day life, if if it's possible to eliminate the big. Um, you know, like all the industries and factories and transportation system. Exactly. I think the, the plastic mach- factories making the bottles for exactly, the shampoo and exactly, and it's a web of a web of pollution and industrialization, Absolutely. isn't it? Yeah. But the fact is that you use that, hmm. and a few of your neighbors use that. Few yes. friends use it, but there's a there's quite a few people in the community who don't have that awareness, yes. or they're not willing to shift from their habits. You yeah. know, so there is a there's a lot of communication work that you that you must be engaged in trying to get people to wake up to the because yeah. if all of the water was clean yeah. from bioenzyme that yeah. would be like the best gift that we could give back to the earth no Absolutely because bioenzyme I mean there's enough research on that that bioenzyme can be quite helpful in controlling the E. coli uh, content in uh, uh, you know the water there's a lot of research mm. paper on that and i personally feel i think it's it's a lot to do with convenience so yes. it it's it's something that one needs to kind of uh, find within you know like how to move a little bit away from the convenience of but it's a convenience yeah. is just habit isn't it yeah, because habit also. Y- you work out actually if you do your own by enzyme you save that trip to the shop you save that money mm. you save this you save that True. I mean, it, you see the you see the savings on a much larger level, yeah. on the environmental level, Absolutely. for our children, yeah. for you know. So it's a, uh, I think it's convenience is really a very um, it's a very myopic yeah. uh, benefit. You know, it's uh, it's far more convenient, I think, if we make our own. True, true. It's just a perspective, it's perspective change, exactly. and also money. You know, like yes. I mean, we we don't know where this world is going. Yes. So you know, imagine if you didn't have to spend anything. Towards mm. cleaning products at all, that's like you know. And then that's going back to a garden where you're not having to buy your lady's finger or your cluster beans or your fruits and exactly. And you've, um, you've, yeah, you've summed it up, you know. Like, yeah. Because for me, in my my journey um, of even learning, um, you know, permaculture when I came for, when I first stepped into solitude with your workshop was the whole idea of me coming there was to see what part of what I eat. Can I be independent, you know, independently right. growing a little bit? Like, like for me, the way I've been brought up, we've never paid a penny for to for coconut and curry leaf and, you know, lemons, all the these basic things. things. Yeah, the, these were trees which are supposed to be growing in your backyard, mm. you know. From, from the South Indian culture, you all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, for banana, sure. papaya, moringa is something yeah. that's a must in every household's Absolutely. backyard. Yeah. So for me, it... it Somehow, every time I pay for curry leaf, something happens in my body. Yeah, you know you what I'm saying? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't feel something's not something's off about mm. it. So for me, when I came to you to learn permaculture, the idea was this, and I, somehow I feel it's come a kind of a full circle. Mm. You know, two and a half years back, learning that from you, and now giving it back to this. Uh, Creating uh, your own yeah, space, yeah, right? Yeah, for the community, not just for me, for the entire right. you know uh, community to see, and it's it's an it's for me. Every minute that I spend on that particular community food garden, for me, it's just an absolute pleasure. Not for a moment do I, you know, think about who else is there to help me. Why isn't, you know, like it's, mm. it's, it feels so rewarding to just be there and watch things grow. And how many and gardens are there now? How many circles are there uh, now? We have about uh, five Five circles, circles. Yeah, and five we have circles. a big hedge yes. which is alive with so many plants. Yes, no? and two uh, patches of uh, spinach garden. Two patches of spinach and the uh, expansion, the next step. We yes. have another land, yeah. no? Yeah, which we is have, next to it, yeah, right? Yeah, which is nice, which receives a lot of sun, which is quite a nice thing. Mm. And uh, well, we have uh, like two ideas that floating around in our head, so we need to see which way we spin. You know, sway. Mm. One would be to have like a nice fruit orchard, mm. possibly. Um, you know, or an alternative would be to have beds of uh, you know vegetable gardens. So we need right. to see which way the community um, you know sways and see what happens. So the community is having a. So you'll present a plan to the community yes. and see. Yeah. And see which way we go, and you know what. What, like for example, drip irrigation is something that we would really like to consider, but it comes at a cost. So definitely, we need to, yeah, you need a water, water tank, yeah. you need a pump, you need so many things. Yeah, you know? yeah, right. 
and also we need to kind of all of us go together in this you know it's yeah. not just but that is the challenge people, isn't it yeah. because uh, that's the challenge because you're how many people in the community we are about 11 families 11 yeah. families yeah. but only three individuals really engaged yeah as of now yeah. so that's 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 obviously a challenge i mean i think that it's a microcosm yeah of of a much larger i mean it's a reflection of it's not only your community like yeah. that it's the it's globally like that true true and it's uh, you know in many places in orville yes. it's like that yeah. and to and we need to wait to, you know patiently <laughs> no i think that i think that the communication work is what's important yeah. you know is yeah. to uh, is to show people the 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 benefits trying to educate people trying to um show people another vision of beauty because yeah. i think a lot of people's ideas of aesthetics are a hibiscus bush and a tree and this and that and a bit of grass yeah whereas my sense of aesthetics i think like yours is is the 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 bo- the, the bottle gourd creeping on a, a natural hedge with yeah. blue flowers and yeah. a drumstick and a banana in in full bloom you know that's uh, so i think it's really an education and um we had done with stefano no and you and uh, and marian we had walked out the land and yes. i think we had estimated about 20 more fruit trees, fruit trees yeah. could be planted so yeah. citrus and mango and yeah. jack and custard apple and all these different yeah. bale fruit all these different yeah. trees i mean if the community had this i don't know there'd be like maybe like 30 fruit trees at the end of that true and true. Uh, in between round each fruit tree there would be bananas and papayas and tapioca and maybe sweet potato and this i mean the yeah. for me i can only see benefit true. you know i see economic gain i see health yeah. gain ecological gain and i see social gain i think the social gain is not understood you know i think that we don't understand deeply enough how much we have created a fragmented society True. because of chasing individual well-being rather than collective well-being now i'm doing a project with some other um people and one of those uh, people has um you know has some some personal issues and because of doing this collective project together he's felt able for the first time in his life to share that with his mm. group of people because they're doing something together because there's a sense of hell being held together and that is for me those are the magic bonds that creates empathy compassion uh, affection and thus freeing of energy yeah absolutely in our society and i think that that's what under underpins the success mm. of a project like that no i completely relate to this you know because me and marian though we have very specific tasks when it comes to watering we try and message each other and make sure that there's at least a 10 minute overlap with our work together mm. that's to come and you know bond it's right. for us to talk to yes, each other you know share. share because we do come from completely different kind of work background and the kind of age group and all of that so mm. it, it feels really good to yes. know what's happening in each other's life she's helped forth so many times when you know during the past last few months for me right. you know like she's been yes. in, so I'm, this is just a good very good example and i of, think there's unknowns as yeah, well like that yeah. that we can't foresee you know the the effects of empathy the effects yeah. of the results of of sharing the yeah. results of collaboration yeah. we don't recognize how that is so profoundly you know it's not defined by our degrees and the money that we have in our banks True. no it really isn't it's defined by much more essential heart Yeah. values and that uh, yeah that's yeah. that's yeah. what i think we could start to focus on Absolutely. on in 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 another in another communication about this it's a little bit less tangible true for people because they have to experience it exactly. for themselves to believe it to believe it true and also for the kids you know the, the the you may be knowing that this community is thriving with kids and when they every time they pass by and they just observe it this is just something it's like putting up um you know like uh, it's 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 like putting up a show for the kids to know that this is how things are grown otherwise yes. many kids just see these vegetables in the supermarket yes. you know they just know that it's brought into the house chopped and eaten well i think another step for serenity um since 
sincerity, serenity, serenity. <laughs> it could be a kid's garden, that the yeah. kids actually have their own garden. Because in, in vocation, I'm doing a kid's garden project. Yes, yes, yeah. And they have made about one, two, three, four, about five different beds now. And they are ready to harvest this Friday amaranth, oh. potalaka, chicken mm. spinach, um, and some uh, um, alternetara, this uh, amaranth um, mm. cousin. And they're going to make their own food. Nice. So that's yeah. like been just like six, seven weeks since they started. And they're ready to do that first step. And they are learning a lot of things socially. Yeah. They're learning massively socially. They're learning skills about gardening. They're taking responsibility. It's really a kid's garden. They're in charge. Mm -hmm. You know, I give them a bit of help. I give them a little nudge and say, don't forget this, do that. And you have to do this and don't forget that. And why don't you try this? But they are, they're in charge. And I think that uh, if you uh, potentially, if you try to create a space where the kids Hmm. are in charge to do their garden, that could have a really big effect on this communication that we're talking about that's necessary to educate the adults. True, true. Because the kids always uh, yeah. influence their parents. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That would be, you know, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a great idea. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, very nice. Thank you so much for sharing, Rekha. And um, we can see photos of this project i think it's on my facebook page and your facebook page some of it yes some of it. and so the videos that we've done so yeah, yeah so maybe we can get some of them onto the onto this um podcast we can get some photos shared through that and um i'll see you on wednesday tomorrow yes, yes we've got yes. some planting to do yeah yeah. Thank you so much. Most welcome. Thank you. So, guys, see you next week. And um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, more sort of live TV sort of style radio show today. Th thanks to Ruben, who is our, um, our visual audio guy. And, of course, thanks to Stefano for making this whole thing happen. And see you soon.